we consider Ampulse as the missing link because uh, we have seen beneficial effects of the SGLT2 inhibitors in patients with chronic heart failure. So both in, in patients with preserved and reduced ejection fraction, so DAPA-HF, emperor preserved, emperor reduced But there were reasons to believe, especially because of the decongestive effects of SGLT2 inhibitors, that they might also work in a more acute setting uh, from patient hospitalized for acute heart failure. One of the good things about this study is we had a wide range of patients. So most of the acute heart failure studies, they exclude patients who had de novo acute heart failure, so who did not have heart failure before. And the first, um, the first um, expression of heart failure was this hospital admission. So they were treatment naive. Uh, this, this group was included. Um, we included both patients with diabetes and without diabetes. Uh, the sister study, Soloist, uh, which, which was a little bit looked like uh, Ampulse, only included diabetic patients, so we did both. We included both patients with um, have PEF, have MREF, and have REF. So that was really a wide range of patients, and I think that's a good thing of the studies. But some people, including myself, are still interested what would happen if we started even earlier, maybe already in the emergency ward uh, phase. And so we started between 24 hours and four days. But I would personally also wonder what would happen if we start really early. And it looks like it's safe, but yeah, you can only know when you, when you do a trial. First of all, um, we have done a pilot study um, in, 90, in 80 patients called EMPA Response um, in our center. And we looked at the safety mainly, which was important because this is a vulnerable patient population. But we also looked at weight loss and diuretic effects uh, on top of di loop diuretic drugs, which all patients receive hospitalized for acute heart failure. And we saw beneficial effects in that small sized pilot study already uh, which made us believe that we could uh, achieve more benefit if we did it in a larger trial. That's a very difficult question. It's always difficult from a drug that has so many potential mechanisms to say this is the specific mechanism that causes this and this is the specific mechanism that causes that. So it's, it's almost impossible to say there, there's a couple of important mechanisms. So it probably improves cardiac metabolism uh, improving cardiac, probably cardiac contrility or cardiac efficiency, so to speak. Um, but also, and that might be relevant in this early setting, and we have quite substantial evidence from this in the IMPULSE trial, that on top of the loop diuretic drug, their, their uh, acroretic or probably uh, glucoretic drugs, so you, you pee out glucose and with that you pee out water as well, uh, so it's a different mechanism from the loop diuretic drugs. And what we saw is a in, in, in further reduction in the weight, so more weight loss with empagliflozin. Uh, several other remarkable findings like le more reduction in signs and symptoms of heart failure. We saw evidence of reduction of anti-pro BMP, so uh, multiple signs that shows us that there was more decongestion in the patients who received empagliflozin on top of those with only loop diuretics. Uh, mainly renal function. Um, we have seen in the chronic heart failure trials that you get an initial dip in the estimated glomerular filtration rate. Um, there's also a lot of electrolyte changes in acute heart failure. There's volume changes, there are electrolyte changes. So we were particularly, well, may maybe not concerned, but more curious to see the effects on safety with related to volume changes, to renal function, to electrolyte changes in these patients. It was very safe. In fact, we had less serious adverse events in the uh, active group, in the empagliflozin group, than we had in the control group. We did see uh, this initial slight drop in EGFR, but remarkably, the acute kidney injury events, as reported by the investigators, were less frequently seen in the empagliflozin group as compared to the placebo group. 
So there is probably a physiological effect of the drug that this slight drop in EGFR, which is not the same as acute kidney injury uh, related events, which were more frequent in the placebo group.